Hey everyone, we're going to go over page 6 of the Fall 2011 Exam 1, and this page is all about pumpkins. So a farmer sponsors a jack-o'-lantern carving contest. Uh, their participants in this contest are grouped on experience level, and based on the size of the pumpkin that they receive. The pumpkins that are provided weigh an average of 15 pounds, with a standard deviation of 4 pounds. So that's some good information there, let's underline that. Uh, it can also be assumed to follow approximately a normal distribution, so that's also good information. So Joe's participating in the jack-o'-lantern carving contest, and he really likes 20-pound pumpkins. So what's the probability he's going to receive a pumpkin that weighs exactly 20 pounds? So this is the probability, if uh, x is the distribution for the weight of the pumpkin, the probability that x is equal to 20. Now remember, with continuous distributions, any continuous distribution the probability of just one precise number occurring, so if this is 20 here, that's 15, the mean, this is 20. Probabilities for continuous distributions are represented by areas, and this area of just one number is a line, and a line has no area. Thus, the probability of getting an exactly 20 pound pumpkin is just zero. In practicality, maybe you'd want to find the probability he gets about a 20 pound pumpkin, maybe from 19 and a half to 20 and a half if they're rounding pumpkin weights. But getting a precisely 20 pound pumpkin, no chance, in theory. So, the standard deviation for weights of the supplied pumpkins is stated as four pounds. Uh, we now need to provide a concise sentence that appro appropriately interprets this value of four as an average distance. So here, I'll write down a good interpretation and identify the parts that are necessary for this interpretation. So, the weights of pumpkins vary from the mean by 15 by 15 pounds, the mean weight of 15 pounds by 4 pounds on average. Okay, so this sentence is a good sentence here, and let me show the important parts here. So, first off, uh, you need to say where the mean is. So, the, we need to specify that this average distance is average distance from the mean weight of 15 pounds. <coughs> you can't just say that values vary from the mean by, um, or your values vary by about 4. 4 from what? You need to have some point of, of center here. Um, of course, you also have to have this idea of how that they're varying from some idea that you're getting this standard deviation idea here. Um, you need to specify what the standard deviation exactly is, but you also need to say that this is an average distance. You're not always going to be four pounds away from 15. In fact, you know, you're probably more likely to be closer than to your mean and further away from it. But of course, there's going to be some variance, and that's measured by, again, this average distance from the mean. All right, so then part C. If the extra large pumpkins are the 15% of pumpkins that weigh the most, or they're yeah, the extra large pumpkins are the top 15% here. So how much must a pumpkin weigh to fall into this extra large category? And we want to report to the nearest tenth of a pound. So essentially, here we want to find um, what weight puts us into that 15th percentile. Another way of looking at this is you want the, oh, whoops. Okay, back to normal. Almost, there we go. Okay, so, We want to find the probability that our distribution 
greater than some number is equal to 0.15. This is when you do that reverse lookup uh, thing on your table. Um, remember though, because this is greater than, this is interested in area um, to the left, so maybe what we really want to do is the probability x is less than some number is equal to 0.85. Because the lower 85th percent is equivalent now to the upper 15th percent, that value at least. So let's find where 0.85 is in our normal table. So let's do some zooming in here. So in the table, the closest value I can find uh, to 0.85 is, looks like 1.04. Yeah, right here. That's as close to 0.85 as we can get, and that corresponds to 1.04 on the table, because this is the 1.0 row, and we're over to the fourth one. So back here. That means that um, we're associated with the z-score of 1.04, but now we need to convert the z-score now into a pumpkin weight. And to do this, we're going to use the percentile equation from the formula card. And you can find that on the formula card back on the first page. right here. So the percentile, if we have our z-score, uh, the standard deviation and the mean, we can get back x, or here, the pumpkin weight. Okay, so x is equal to z times sigma plus mu. So x is equal to 1.04 times 4 plus 15, and that's equal to 19.16. Of course, though, we have to report this uh, to the nearest tenth, so that's 19.2. And don't forget your units, friends. Pounds. All right, so that's our questions here on the normal distribution. Now we're going to look uh, now at the uniform distribution in Part D. Let's go ahead and clear the board. Okay. <clears throat> so the time it takes the participant to carve his or her pumpkin is uniformly distributed between 5 and 45 minutes. So we need to provide a complete sketch of this distribution. So the uniform distribution is just your box distribution. So it goes from the lowest value, 5 to 45. All right. Um, and remember, the area of any distribution has to be 1, so in between these two values is 40. Ooh. I draw really ugly 40s. So that's what we have in between there, which means the height here has to be 1 40th. All right? Of course, though, it says to make sure that we give all appropriate labels. Um, typically, it's not necessary, but for a continuous distribution, the y-axis label is density. And then our x-axis label is uh, the time to carve a pumpkin. And of course, units is also important in minutes as that otherwise we don't know what the meaning of 5, 45, or any number in between is. All right, so that's our picture. Finally, we need to find the probability a randomly selected participant will take more than half an hour to carve their pumpkin. So here now we're just finding an area. So this is the probability that x is greater than 30. So let's go ahead and plot this. So 30 is going to be about right here. And we want to find this area. All right. So 
that just means we take base times height. So the base here, uh, this length, is going to be 45, the end point, minus 30. times the height, which is always 1 40th for this distribution. If we simplify this, we get 3 eighths, or in decimal form, 0.375. And that's our final answer. All right, that's it for page six. Best of luck studying.